to Heart Talks. Um, I've got Lee Kerr with me again. And uh, last show we talked about uh, healing centers. And uh, that's up on my website on uh, the healing centers page. And, and uh, that was a great talk. And we could even talk about that a whole lot more. Um, thanks for, for joining me again. Thank you so much for having me. It's just wonderful to be back, as always, with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we met, uh, Lee and I met at the Sasquatch Conference in Chewila, Washington, and uh, made an instant connection. And one of the reasons why Lee has become, like, one of my best friends is because she and I can talk about interdimensional relationships just like this, back and forth. It's just normal discussion for us where in some cases you just can't be so free <laughs> to talk about that stuff. But here at Heart Talks, yeah. that's what we're here to do. That's what, what we're supposed to um, yeah. lay down this foundation of of authenticness, of, of truth, of, of our, our uh, relationships that we have. So thank you for, for sharing with, with everyone with me. Not a problem. It's, it's absolutely my pleasure. And you're right. It's very hard to speak freely about this topic. Um, but I have to say in the past few years, I'm just doing just that just speaking freely this is my truth this is who i am and well if people don't understand they can either try to or or not, not. <laughs> yeah right but, um, but we've had many conversations about this type of thing you and i and it's just amazing and we share a lot of coincidences as well Mm -hmm. uh, we both have our Sasquatch friends and uh, down here in Melbourne, Australia, where I'm from, uh, we call them Yowies and uh, they've been here too in my place and uh, they brought me a gift of a hair sample. Well, when I say a hair sample, it was a, it was a, a ball of hair which uh, they gave me about a week or two ago yes yes and, uh, that was amazing and was there um in this particular um gift giving was there anything pre happening there had you called upon them had you had uh had you had yeah. um them? What, well since getting back from the states and and having seen Camus there um I'd had, okay, we got back from the States and then we had a bit more time. So we went to Brisbane, we went traveling, Mick and I, Mick, my partner. And we had, oh, we had, we didn't have a sighting, but we had definite connections there. And I got some information psychically, as you know, they mind speak to you. Right. And one of the things they told me was that they really like bamboo. Um, and how I, I got the information was more like seeing a, a little movie in my head, mm -hmm. my third eye. Mm -hmm. And I saw a yaoi with the bamboo and they snapped it and they were either chewing on it or sucking it. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And they just said, we like bamboo. Mm -hmm. um, and the next day... Uh, actually, it was that night um, we were camping in this camper van type of thing. And through the night, Mick uh, woke up and he looked out the front uh, windscreen and he saw uh, what he thought were two headlights. Mick's very rational in his thinking. So he thought they were car headlights. Um, but they were doing kind of strange things like they were here and they weren't moving like this, like a car wouldn't move like that. So the next day, the next morning he got out and he went to this uh, area that he saw what he thought were headlights and there, there wasn't even a road in the distance. It was just bush. And he 
thought I must have seen a Yowie, the eyes, because apparently they can glow in the night. Mm -hmm. And turned around and by a tree was a stick of bamboo. Uh -huh. And talking about a big stick, it was probably one and a half metres in length. Uh -huh. And it was just resting by a tree. And when you looked around the whole perimeter of this bush, there was no bamboo trees anywhere. It's not an area that they grow bamboo. So it was definitely a gift, yes. Yeah. But so that happened and then we returned and probably a few days um, before I had seen a yaoi, a face of a yaoi in my mind's eye as I was in that twilight sort of before you sleep, mm -hmm. um, before you're just going to sleep and you're still awake sort of thing. Um, so the face was very close to me and it was just a frown looking at me like and the sense I got was it was just checking me out and to see whether I was scared of it and I remember saying to it um, I don't know what you're angry about, but uh, there's no need for anger here. We come from a place of love. And then it just popped away. Right. And it was the next morning that I woke up um, and there was a hair uh, ball or whatever you want to call it in the basin of my ensuite. We have two basins there. And in one of them, it was just sitting there. Now, that morning, Mick had gone somewhere early, whether it was work or whatever, um, and I saw it there, and because it was clearly in the basin, which has a white background, and this hair was quite dark, and I thought to myself, so it stood out, and I thought, oh, has Mick been cutting his hair or something? But it seemed a little odd, and I picked it up, and I felt it, and the texture was nothing like Mick's hair. It was quite thick and very coarse and I was just like scratching my head thinking could this be what I think it is um, but anyway I called Mick and I said did you happen to cut your hair and leave it in the basin and he didn't know what I was talking about he said no <laughs> and I asked him again just to be sure he said no definitely not so um it was a hair sample. Now, some of the hair I looked at was about two inches long. But last night, when I took it out of the bag, I keep it in a, a little bag. Mm -hmm. uh, when I took it out of the bag, one of the pieces is actually, uh, I'd say, four to five inches long, which I didn't realise before. So it is definitely a sample from one of our interdimensional friends, the Yowie or the Sasquatch. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, getting gifts from interdimensional beings is, is a real big gift. Mm -hmm. And you don't take that lightly. And, and funny, we've, we talked about this earlier. Once we get the gift, we immediately, there's immediately knowingness. But then our minds get in and we have to try to prove it wrong. <laughs> and there's just this little turmoil within when uh, you know the yeah. first thing we knew was oh look at this I know when I got my gifts I opened the front door and looked straight down as if I knew it was going to be there yeah um, so yeah. Um, uh, uh, after we go through that turmoil of is it real you know and all the questions that we know everybody else is going to ask then there's just that sacred moment where, yeah. oh my God, it just feels so good to be part of the interdimensional, um, you know, universe that we're, we're. I think part of that too, uh, Sheila, is what goes through your mind is you just, you're jumping for joy inside and you want to share that with everyone. 
Mm. And then that little voice pops up in your head and, and says, you know, what if people don't believe me? Mm. And you do go through that kind of a scope too. But now I'm at the point where I don't care if people believe me or not. I really don't care. Right. Um, right. This is happening. This has happened. And I don't know. Take what take it or leave it, you know? Well, it's such a personal experience. It is. It's a very personal experience. And the fact that we would even share it in the first place is, is pretty amazing to me. I mean, you know, I was, uh, I kept all of this to myself until I got uh, heart talks. And then that's whenever I started sharing my stories too. And, and I can say, you know, in the th three years, the three seasons I've done it, you know, it has taken me three seasons to be able to actually feel free in my own world to yeah. share my story. So, you know, that that's that's another thing that makes us close is that we do have that level of experience uh, of sharing. And it's um, it's very validating to have friends. Yes. Finally, at last, that uh, un can understand yes. each other. Jeez, yeah. And I um, mean, in the past few years, too, I mean, all of this, and there, there has been so many experiences that I, I just come out and I share it now because I am at that level where I just don't care what people think anymore. Mm -hmm. and I think when you're at that level, there's a, there's a whole sense of freedom in that yes yes there is and that's what we are uh i'd almost say grasping but it is what yeah. we um it is what we are are creating for ourselves um and and when you start talking about freedom man that uh that sort of changes uh definitions when you bring it into your own own personal world because uh you know, your, your own personal freedom is something that you really have to create and, and uh, take for yourself and live it. Yeah. yeah. So, like, were you, um, did you start having early uh, connections, uh, you know, at an early age? Or is this something that's just started here with you? Well, I did uh, from, as, from as long as I can remember. But... Looking back now, I didn't really understand what was happening. So from a, a very early age, I had a sense that the world was so wrong and upside <laughs> down and everything is just wrong. And I would just also know things about different things on a spiritual level and my mother would say, how do you know that? And I just said, looking quite baffled that she didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Being adult. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought adults knew all of this stuff, you know. But I just said to her, well, it's, it's the knowing. And she just, we, ca we called it the knowing because... And I even had to explain her to her what that was. And it's just a sense of you just know within your body that your body and your soul and your heart that, that this is what it is. Um, this is the truth sort of, of what you're trying to say. Um, so I had that from a very young age, probably age four, five, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I used to play a game with my brother when we were around about that age where things would, uh, it was like a game we played, we'd sit in a circle and we'd put something in the middle and we'd put the, the matches all the way around with the, the red strike part facing towards the middle. We'd hide and we'd say these kind of magical words, abracadabra, whatever, and the thing in the centre would disappear and then we'd say it again, it would come back. And got to the point I felt a little uncomfortable because there was a part of me that thought my brother was doing it. And when I realised he wasn't doing it, I got a little bit scared, I think, and we stopped. 
but I've always had a strong connection to the other side in spirit. Um, and when it started to peak, when I was about in my early 20s, um, you know, I'd hear knocking on my door. I'd hear people calling my name from this close to my, my ear. Wow. Um, that happened quite often. I actually told it to go away because I was a little bit scared then. Mm -hmm. um, but move, moving forward a few years down the track, I was ready and it, it all just came back. So, yeah, those type of things happened. Um, I had some magical experiences um, in times where I was not well. Um, for example, with my firstborn, Lachlan, <clears throat> I was in labour for 24 hours and then they realised I needed to have a, a caesarean section. <clears throat> so um, they did that and it's incredibly taxing on your body, as you can imagine. So after the surgery, I was uh, hemorrhaging quite a bit through where the sutures were and I was in recovery and I was exhausted and I had not had food or water for probably 72 hours, I'm not sure, but it was a long time. One of the things they do tell you is not to eat or drink, so that's the reason why. Um, so I was to the point where I felt like with, with the, and I had lost a lot of blood and then I was hemorrhaging and the nurses were gathered round. They were discussing what to do when the doctor was called. I actually felt like I was slipping away. Um, it wasn't a full near-death experience, but it was definitely some something was going on. My body was shutting down. Mm. Um, and they were trying to inject me with who knows what i'm not in the medical field so i don't actually know what they were doing mm -hmm. my veins had collapsed um so they were having a hard time and i remember i was freezing cold i was shaking my body was in shock and i just remember i started talking to jesus as he's um been quite a good buddy of mine through the years mm -hmm. and um but in saying that, I don't consider myself to be a religious person. Right. I'm very spiritual, but non-religious. Um, so I began talking to him. And at that stage, I was really quite happy just to go. I felt quite at peace. I knew my son was born. He was okay. And I was so tired and exhausted. I could have just easily let go. And I heard him talking to me and a feeling of his presence, although I didn't see anything. And it was a beautiful sensation of um, just being in a different place. It was like I felt warmth come into my body and I just heard him say, you're going to be fine. And then instantly after that, the bleeding had stopped before the doctor had come. It just stopped. And that was that experience. Wow. So it was pretty incredible. And I had a vision of him uh, 2002, and that was an incredible experience. And this is the one I spoke about at the conference that you um, were there. That vision that I had completely changed my life. Um, it was, it's very hard to explain how that felt. Um, comparing things to this world, on the day that you get married, you're usually your most happiest and it's usually a great day. This was so much better than that. It was incredible. It was phenomenal. And um, 
he spoke about many, many things, which I won't go into because it'll be like a 10 hour show. <laughs> but um, he told me many, many things and I am writing a book about the experience so that people can read what the message is. But a glimpse of it is it's about people um, basically religion divides people and he wants people to know that they can go directly to him either through meditation or prayer or just just talking which is prayer in itself and you don't need to go through different channels through a third party uh, we are spiritual beings in a physical body and we've lost our connection through the way um, and he really needs people to get the connection back to to empower humanity to to we've got so much beautiful um, power within ourselves that we need to connect more to it and connect more to him through that as well does that make sense yes because every time we connect with that vibration and then connect with others that vibration starts moving because that vibration is in the core of all of us yeah. and once <clears throat> once one of us ignites that it's like the crystalline in energy you know you got it going okay people can't help but be attracted to it it just comes out like this yes and um and the, and you know um, that relationship um once you make that connection that vibrational connection it sort of like happens through you there's mm -hmm. a vibration that happens through you and it is so wonderful it doesn't feel yeah. like church yeah it, no it feels like yourself and that it's just coming out and there's just this amazing energy and the yeah. feeling and and the oneness of it and um and you know <laughs> you start trying to find a bunch of words to describe it and we only have like three or four words that just barely covers it and um and once that, that you make that connection it's always connected then yeah. after that yeah and, that's right. and the thing is we're really born with this we're, we're born with that connection and we lose it yeah. um, through the world of programming and and religion and everything um, we lose that that solid connection to to the upper realms and we need to connect back with that and that that's how i live my life i i always have the connection and uh, i work with them every day and i listen to them and they guide me um, and i'm talking about many many different guides that i have right. you know i've got um the the native american indian white cloud uh pleiadian and Arcturian, which work along with that Christ consciousness. It's all together. Um, angels, I've had experiences where I've seen beautiful angels. Um, it's incredible. I just wish I could show people what I've seen. Um, but that was a, an incredible experience too, which only happened about two years ago. I was attuned for Reiki and I was on the Reiki uh, massage table and I had two practitioners attuning me to Reiki. And while I was on that table, um, I was there in the physical sense, um, but I was also on another table etherically somewhere else. Mm -hmm. and at the same time, what was, sorry, it's hard to explain, so I'm trying my best. <laughs> um, while in the etherical realm, 
there were these beautiful angels um, doing their own type of attunement and there was uh, four smaller angels and, and four larger angels and their, their wings were massive. Um, probably, I'm just guessing, uh, seven foot high and they stood right up this way. Each of the angels had a, a beautiful flowing garment but they all had different colours on and they were very, very soft pastel colours. So one would have a very pale lemon, one would have a very pale kind of a, a mint colour, one would have blue, etc, etc. Mm. Um, and they had some kind of a, a pen which was like a, a device that looked like a stainless steel pen. It wasn't, but I'm just trying to give you a description of what it was like. And they just tapped me on the forehead here and there was a, a like a, a liquid of coloured amber and it was a very thick kind of substance that came out. Now, when this was going on here in the physical part, when I had the two practitioners working on me, lovely Anne and her friend, um, I was just tingling all over, tingling from head to toe. And it was just the most beautiful feeling. It was amazing. Um, I only wish they were here to kind of verify the experience. It was just amazing. Right. You know, one of the biggest challenges we face when we're trying to talk about this is that people have to understand there's, a, there's this 3D level and its vibration is like this, okay? And then there's a next level and that vibration is like this. And, and I, I was always taught that I've got to meet him in the middle. So mm -hmm. I had to learn, well, and like you were talking, now that, now that I can look back, I was having outer body experiences at a very young age, but there was not a person on the planet, on my planet, that talked about that or had descriptions or anything. So like, <clears throat> like you were saying, as a child, you just, and, and you know, <clears throat> as a species, I hadn't, I hadn't evolved enough to even you know, question it. It was yeah. something that happened, you know, and it was cool. And, uh, uh, and so the whole idea of, you know, well, we didn't, you, we couldn't see it. Well, that's because you were seeing with 3D vibrational eyes and you need to get into that next vibration, generally with your eyes closed at the beginning yeah. to be able to see this stuff. It takes... Um, and, and, you know, like now we're getting pretty good at it and we're seeing things We're uh, we've gotten into that next level of frequency to where, to where, you know, yeah. Yeah. our weave can happen. It's, it's, yeah. and when your, your frequency does shift like that, the more things happen. Yes. More yeah. and more. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, uh, with the Arturian being, um, I was, oh, look, I think I was around about nine years old and uh, we used to go out the back paddock from where we lived at the time uh, because there was a show ground that had a show on once a year and they'd have fireworks. So we'd go out to the paddock, which was at the back of our house, and we'd wait to see the fireworks, kind of cheating. We didn't have to pay, we'd just look. <laughs> right. So I was with my mother and my brother at the time and nine o'clock the fireworks would come on, roughly nine or 9.30, something like that. But anyway, we waited and we didn't see fireworks, but what we saw was a craft. And the craft was a fluoro orange color craft. Um, the classic shape of like the bell kind of shape mm -hmm. and so it was approximately um, probably 
I'm not good with uh, length or that type of thing. So I'm saying five to 800 metres over that way. And this craft was hovering about, you know, the size of a house above the ground, moving across and it went, and we were just like, wow, went behind some trees and it didn't come out, which was rather odd. I remember that night we didn't see the fireworks and my mum said to my brother, run inside and get the camera and he took forever and he came back out. He couldn't find the camera. Anyway, that was it, nothing more to show. We went in. But years later, I wanted to have a regression and find out more about what that was about because it was rather odd that it seemed like there was a bit of missing time and that, that uh, the whole thing seemed kind of odd that the craft didn't come out on the other side of the trees, for one, but we didn't see the fireworks, etc. So I did have a regression um, with Mary Rodwell and we went through the, the scenario of what happened and the next thing I remember saying that I was in a craft and there was a being standing there who had an elongated shaped head this way, uh, the big eyes, and was wearing a purple high collared um, cape and the cape went all the way to the ground. And next to him was a being that had oh, your classic Pleiadian looking guy with a, you know, a nice kind of muscular body. He had a tight jumpsuit on, which was blue, gold belt buckle. He had insignia on his left side and he had the blonde hair that was wavy, came down to here, kind of pushed back, semi-tanned skin. I actually have a drawing. Um, so I'm, I'm smiling so big on the inside because <laughs> I'm, on the inside, I'm going, oh, me too. Oh, me too. Oh, really? Oh, wow. It's probably might be the same guy. So this is the the mm -hmm. the one here that I saw. And yeah. next to him, which I have this picture, this is the Pleiadian that I saw. Um, and the insignia was a circle with a triangle and it was all in gold. Um, and this being spoke to me telepathically um, because when he did talk, it was a sound, it was a frequency. It wasn't words like right. we have. Right. And he just spoke straight to my mind and he told me that, um, you know, there was something particular, a task that, I was assigned to do and, um, you know, they'd been watching me for a long time since my early development and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so after this regression, I said to Mary, is this all real? And she said, well, you need to do your research Etc. And I didn't know what this being was. So I, I googled um, elongated head alien being with um, long cape purple in colour and up popped these pictures and I said, oh my goodness, that is exactly like this being that I saw. And I did my research and this was an Arcturian being they have something in common with uh, Jesus Christ and the Pleiadians and everything just made sense. Everything just made sense. And for years I'd had also a little sound here, just here. It was like a, a beeping Morse code sound and Arturian, it's one method they communicate like that. So it all made sense to me. And the more and more people I've met that have had, I mean, the, the synchronicity is you, it's just undeniable. Yes. And it just goes to show that with regression, you can recover those 
memories that have been hidden or taken away from us. You can recover those me memories. And that is, in fact, what I do myself now. So, and I enjoy that a lot, of course. Um, but do tell me your experience. Wow. <laughs> I found myself in a room with people. And I walked up there and I went, greetings. And they all did the same thing. And over here was that Arcturian and Michael. Oh. And I went up to the Arcturian and this was the most gentle, most beautiful, gentle being I had seen at that point. I mean, I've seen lots of them, but oh my goodness, I just I just connected so deeply. Tall, and he reached out and he took took my arm and rubbed my arm and gave me that sh that shot that you were talking about. I called it inoculation. I didn't know it wasn't it wasn't like a needle, but it went into my arm and he just rubbed my arm very gently to let me know that it was all right. Mm -hmm. Michael was right here, so I knew everything was all right. Yeah. Uh, then there was this table here with uh, a series of those inoculations, and one by one, I inoculated my guest, and after their inoculation, they went into that craft that you just talked about. And then when they were all inoculated, then I entered the craft too, closed the door, took off, and then I that then I I lost the mem the memory from that. Yeah. When I came to from that, I had I had um, you know like travel sickness or what I I got I came out of that and I went and threw up oh. Because it was the first time that I had memories of moving so quickly. It was the first, it was one of those first, first time things. <clears throat> what was amazing. And then, of course, I'm just, you know, now my mind is trying to keep, keep up with what I had just experienced. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't even, I'm not even saying anything because I'm still trying to, like, process it. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine, Frosty, comes over. She hands me a book that's got that exact person, the Pleiadian, on the cover of the book. Wow. And I just started bawling my eyes. It was validation. Yes, yeah. child. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. exactly what happened. Yeah. So uh, that was my, uh, that was, you know, the beginning of some major, major memories. Prior to that, I was, I, I was very aware that I do have a place on, um, in, uh, in my galactic life. I have a place as like a teacher, professor, and I have students who even today, every night, uh, when I tune into them, yeah. Uh, will then ask me questions. And a lot of the questions that they ask are, how does it feel? Mm. How does it feel to do this? How does it feel to experience that? You know, what? Uh, and so, um, so once I realized that I had taken this position uh, as a, as a, prof I call it a professor, but that's, that's not the right, right word for it. But that, but that I was being watched. This is like a, you know, um, term paper. <laughs> I'm going to go to Earth. You guys keep track of me. Hopefully, I'm going to reconnect mm. so that we can continue, you know, um, in, in our communications. And so um, it was great. I, I started that connection probably in the very early, late 90s or very early 2000s is whenever I yeah. awoke to that. So It's amazing how many people have said to me, I've seen you on a craft. Right, right. And, 
and then they start telling me a bit and I, I get a feeling of, yeah, that sounds so familiar. Yeah. yeah. Now, I had a beautiful drawing done by Christine Dennett, Kassara, and this is going back probably three years ago now, and I'll, I'll just show you the picture. Um, oh, that is so beautiful. Yeah, so... There's a, it's it's funny now how this picture came about was I asked her to do a meditation and, and draw me a picture um, and she said well they want you to have this picture as well this one and she said there's someone in the picture that I know do you know this person and I said no and she said well you're working with this person on some level and um, I won't say her name because I'm not sure if she would, I haven't got her permission. But uh, so, and she says, and, and you're in this picture and you're doing this work. And if you look close and it's, I. Wait just a minute. Let's take a quick break and then we're going to get back, right back to the picture. Okay. Okay. We'll be right back. And we're back. All right. Let, let show us that picture again. Okay. So if you look at the picture, it's a craft, and there's the beings all the way around, and there's one, two, three, four, seven people in the center, and in the center is the Earth, and it's like we're healing the Earth, the planet, and Mother Earth, Gaia. And there's beautiful columns of light coming up from each individual. And the ETs are, are on the outskirts and they're just watching what's taking place. And no doubt they've probably taught us more about that. The picture itself I printed off my printer and it's not too clear. So I don't know if you can actually see. That's, the, pretty, that's pretty good. Earth is in the centre. Yes. And the columns of light. Yes. When you showed it to me, I went, oh, I know that. <laughs> yes. Most people say, I've seen that before. <laughs> yes. So now what's happening at the moment is I'm connecting with people who I've never met before on this plane of existence that are saying to me, I'm in the picture. And, and these people are connected to the other person that was mentioned before. So it's it's starting to form. It's coming together. It is. Yep. We are. We are gathering. We are coming together. And and thank God, you know, I mean, I hope, I hope to God that that's what this show is doing, is helping bring us together and give us a, a platform to just be free to talk about our experiences, knowing and supporting one and each other on, on, yeah. uh, on, on these journeys we're taking. Cause, yeah, it, uh, well, it absolutely is. And that, that's part of your role. And uh, to bring not just the information out, but I think perhaps on subconscious levels, people will be connecting and we're all connecting all throughout because a lot of people have, you know, a, a higher purpose to be here um, that, that we're all resonating with. And we all know it's within us and it's just starting to unravel. Yeah. Right. Okay. And you, you have another uh, picture that you had just recently gotten. Oh, yes. Now, this uh, I've got two pictures to show you. I had a beautiful lady, and I don't think she'll mind me saying her name, Marie Clement. She's from Australia, and she's amazing. She will tune in. I got a reading, and I got a portrait, and the reading, she picked up all the beings around me. Unfortunately, she could only put four in the picture. She said, I can't put them all in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I said, well, just put the four in. That's okay. And um, so I'll show you this picture now. It's quite big. Oh. So oh. put white cloud. Oh, my God. Green. Uh, she's put Yeshua. Yeah. And the angel. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, wow. 
That is so cool. I mean, look at the detail. It is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I love that right there. Oh my God, that's beautiful. So much detail. She's, she's oh, incredible. Love to have one of those. And you know, I knew all these beings were there, but it was just confirmation. It's just, it's like, yeah, it's <laughs> incredible. So how did that go? You, she gave you a reading and then, and then well, was she sketching at the time or did she do that later? While she's doing the reading, she does uh, like an outline sketch of, of the beings that she's seeing uh -huh. and she put exactly what she's seeing onto the paper. Uh -huh. Wow. And then she will take it away and she'll fill it in and add the colour and the detail and the texture and everything. So wow. quite amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. I met uh, another beautiful lady um, and I don't think she'll mind me mentioning her name, Glenis Bourne. She's also from Australia, probably because I live here. <laughs> and uh, she paints beautiful angels and Jesus and Ascended Masters. So naturally I was drawn to her. We had a great day, a beautiful conversation. And this one really stood out to me because in my experience with um, Jesus, he actually likes to be called Yeshua. Um, he was just like this portrait and he had his arms out to me like this. Mm. And just in... in mentioning that, excuse me, <clears throat> um, seven days after that, the vision of Jesus, I was, oh, I was on walking on cloud nine. I was just floating. I was just, it was amazing. And I just needed some confirmation. I said, Jesus, is this all real, you know? And on the seventh night, Mary came to me the same way she, with her arms outstretched. And when this beautiful lady, Marie, paints oh. pictures, now you wouldn't be able to get the full impact of this picture, but um, when you're in the room, these pictures kind of talk to you and the energy from some of the pictures really you can feel the energy and it draws you in this one spoke to me this is why i took this one and mick bought that for me wow i saw That's the picture that you had posted of she had you were standing there and there was just a whole bunch of her paintings there oh. just amazing she actually has a full house and every room has just these portraits everywhere. It's amazing. Wow. wow. And I came across this one and I said to her, I have seen this lady before. <laughs> and Mick said, I've seen her before too. So naturally we had to have her as well so we we bought her as well and um this is a pleiadian being and the moment she said pleiadian i knew that it was um that's why it resonated with me i had a beautiful encounter with a pleiadian uh the ship came landed she came out long blonde hair beautiful striking uh beautiful and she handed me this thing that I understood was going to help me with time travel. Uh, it looked about the size, I, I, it was black, and it looked about the size of one of those tape things that you take boxes with. It was. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, um, and she gave it to me, and I was just like, oh, thank you. It was just, you know, one of those wonderful moments. And, and, uh, uh, and and that's all that I kind of really remembered of that incident. But but I as soon as I saw her, I knew her, and it was it was not odd that I was given this gift at all in that moment, and uh, and evidently I'm using it well. <laughs> you were just speaking about time before, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> oh. oh, it's so lovely. Uh, it's so lovely to, to have all of this awaken within us and you know there's a process in owning it and in in allowing it you know to integrate it into our daily lives and uh, the 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 contrast between the 3d world and the rest of me is so incredible and yeah. especially right now in the u.s there is some very intense energies going around and and um, I got to say to my advantage I can block it out and and uh, you know go board ship or go to my homeland or anything else that I that I want to um, that is the magic in our worlds that is um, how we will I mean can you imagine can you imagine what we're going to be doing next year this time? I can't imagine. It makes my head like want to explode off. I can't even. Because right now, things are just phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, the lady that did the beautiful portrait and the reading, she said to me, um, she said, things are just going to go like this, like, in this direction mm -hmm. and she said you think it's good now she said you just wait and see so I can I can't imagine it's but it's going to be beautiful that's for sure it is and and um, for those who are are worried about situations in the world you know um, if you'll just kind of start taking it inward and uh, start um, you know, discovering all that you are, that is, that will be your freedom from the chaos of the world. No doubt about it. Yeah. So the, this book that you're writing, um, yeah, talk about that. Okay, so the book is, um, I actually feel like my, gu my guides have uh, really, brought me to to write these books these two books um now one of the books is a compilation of people's experiences with intimate interdimensional beings mm -hmm. so their stories about their own personal experiences um and there'll be a list of different types so there will be ascended masters angels ets um Sasquatch, because they're all interdimensional or multidimensional, really. Yeah. Um, so it's a book about people sharing the information about what's happening. And I guess it's really to make people aware that these things are happening. Um, it's very real to the people that are experiencing all of this. And... Um, I actually just enjoy reading those stories of people's experiences. So I thought I'm going to make a book about that. So the book itself will be out next year, 2017. I can't give you a title yet, um, but um, you can just watch out for my name, Lee Kerr, for the book. Yeah. Yes. Once once it gets into uh, publication, we'll do another show and and okay. yeah. promote it and and yeah. talk about that. And it's cool that people are sending their stories to you. Yes, it is. It's it's wonderful, and I I so appreciate that, and I thank them all very very much for that. And yeah. the nice thing about this is that it's being uh, it's being written from someone who has had these loving experience, not from someone who is judging or wondering if it's real or, or all that. You can take it to the core of its truth, and that's, that's really cool. Yeah, that's right. Um, no, it's, I've had many experiences myself, and having worked with people uh, as a regression therapist about their experiences. Yeah, that's got to be something. And a counsellor. 
I've been there to help them decipher um, how to look at things. And um, But it's going to be a very uplifting uh, book, so it should be a really good read. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I... Uh, and, and so how do you do uh, your past life regression? Past life regression, um, as in what you mean, how, how do I... How do you, as a practitioner, how do you help people? Um, okay, well, with the past life regression, um, I, I do take it from a perspective of a, a healing tool um, because a lot of people just for interest sake might want to look at a past life, what they've had, just out of interest... Mm -hmm. You know, they're curious, so they go down that path. But quite often you'll find that you have certain things that you might do in this life that are blocks or um, things you're, you're finding difficult. And quite often that can link to a past life. So I'll just give you an example. Um, some people and this is just a purely example, I'm just making this up just to show you how this can work. Um, let's just say a lady has problems with speaking out about a situation. She's uh, not, uh, not able to speak her truth or, or to stand up for it herself. So in a past life, for example, she may have been Persecuted for speaking her truth. She may have had trauma towards her throat, which is where she's talking from. Mm -hmm. So the, there's an energetic sort of imprint from that past life that's come over to this life mm -hmm. about that area of trauma. And in this lifetime, she'll be having difficulty with certain things affecting that do you understand how it links in oh absolutely uh I, there are a lot of of women who cannot wear turtlenecks because uh of of we were all hung in salem mm -hmm. and it wasn't until i went through my past life and forgave that i was able to then wear turtlenecks and don't have that issue with my throat yeah, yeah. so that is exactly who your your uh your example was exactly uh, uh, what some of the things that I went through. Yeah, yeah, I am absolutely. looking forward to finding out what my uh, connection is in Australia because uh, I, I knew I had a connection in Australia back in like 94. Okay. And, uh, and, and now, and, and I knew that if I was – if I was ever to go back there or be connected there, it had to be in a spiritual sense because I, I feel the depth of my, of my, of my core when I, when I think of out there and everyone that, and I have gained such incredible friends, mm. uh, close like you and I have become. I knew that, um, you know, there is some connection there and uh, I am looking forward to finding out what that is because, and I, I, I think it has to do with some caves. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it could be, um, it could be connected with the Yowies as well. Uh, I'm now finding that I had a connection with the Yowies here. Then I went to the States. I had the connection with the, the Sasquatch there. They're all family, yes. uh, brother and sisters. Yes. And I'm now, you know, find myself working, uh, gradually being introduced to the clans here. And a part of the connection is through another spirit guide of mine, which is an Aboriginal elder. And she comes to me quite often psychically and talks to me. And the connection is very powerful. It's probably one of the most powerful connections I have yes. to someone in spirit. Because when, when she comes through, my whole body gets uh, the hairs stand on end. Yes. 
Um, but no doubt you've probably got some kind of a, a spiritual connection to the Aboriginal elders here, like you have the, the native Indians there because they're all connected. Um, so, but in relation to caves, there've been caves discovered here in Australia with um, prehistoric type writing and glyphs on these uh, caves. Have you heard about that? Oh, yes. And there's light and there's water down there. And it's a whole, you know, and when I first, when I first started uh, discovering that, I, I, it was like I already understood about multidimensional and, and how that worked. And, and uh, so I was, you know, uh, I've been very patient. <laughs> waiting for all my connections to happen <laughs> and I and I'm also I'm kind of the type that allows it to come so I don't um, I don't um, strive yeah. So yeah. yeah well it's, it's a beautiful amazing um, place Australia and there, there's so much knowledge here from past eons ago and um you know when you build your connections here and more information that that keeps coming it's pretty incredible yeah so no doubt you'll be here soon uh i believe that i absolutely believe that well and do you have any other pictures you want to share because you have Ooh. very cool pics well, I do have the picture that I drew when I had my first Yowie encounter. Um, that was the most amazing experience. That was like, uh, we'd been getting lots of signs over the years up to this point. And uh, I have another friend, Brooke Nabilius, who you met at the conference and he's Australian. Yeah. And him and I connect quite good on a psychic level as well. And he said, you're going to have contact this weekend. And he could pick up the Aboriginal elder. I call her mother because that's what she, she told me to call her. She's like a protector of the clans and, and they're all calling her mother. Oh, that would be who I would connect with. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I always ask for the grandmother to join me when I go out to the woods. Yeah. So I like to keep that clan close. I like to keep uh, the grandmothers and the elders near. Yeah. And Brooke said, uh, yep, she's pointing you in the direction. Go to this particular place on this particular day and you're going to have a sighting. And I felt it within me that I would have a sighting. So uh, we went down to this place and we had, um, you know, we had things like little rock stacks and, and we were finding feathers along the way and different things. And anyway, we, we got to this place. And I'm not giving too much information away because I'm a protector of these areas. Right. And, um, you know, we've, we all have... Yowie hunters and Sasquatch hunters. Yes. I'm not a part of that. And I'm also protecting them too. So I'm not going to give information away so people can go down there and, you know. Anyway, um, so I felt like I was being put in a altered state. And I felt extremely sleepy, so much so that I said to Mick, I have to have a sleep. <laughs> so I sat down and I rested, went like this, and I rested my head there, but I knew I was going to see him. So I just spoke softly while I was resting, and I said, it's okay, we're here, we're protectors. Um, we're here to, if you wish to show us, we accept that. If not, so be it. But we respect this is your land. We asked permission to be there. And with that, I heard the rustling coming for me. 
at a fast rate and something was smashing through the bush. And you know when you hear this, it's not an animal because if you think of the largest animal that could be coming through, well, this, the noise was incredible. The, the stomping and the snapping of branches and the, the rustling sound. And my eyes went big, you know, and I was like, I'm going to see it. And then I saw it and it ran up the embankment. So I got home and I wanted to do a little drawing because I wanted to capture that moment. I didn't have a camera. So I'm just going to show you this picture. Oh, yeah. So he was running upwards. Wow. So he was a little bit bent over. Um, actually, I did ask the last, uh, when I got the hair in my basin, I asked if it was this one and it was a yes. So there you go. Yeah, you know, I, I believe once we make connections, we do become part of a clan. Yeah. And and there I, I absolutely believe that even before our humans can process or make sense of this, we've already made the connection at that other other dimensional. And as as light workers and, and bringers of, of new energy, I think it is our part and they are so delicate with us in 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 um introducing us to each other and 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 trying you know they know that our hearts are into this and and so you know and i have to giggle because here i had this mouse in the house <laughs> <laughs> and i'm <laughs> i'm laughing at myself because you know i'm having an issue with the mouse but Give me a Sasquatch or an ancient one or any of that. I'm fine. But <laughs> a little mouse, and I had to get. I had to get. Um, I had to get pretty firm with my. I called my Sasquatch clan to uh, come handle the mouse because I'm like, I do not want to kill this. You guys could have it if you want it, but I do not want it. It cannot be in my house, and I. You must take it out, and I. Um, I put peppermint oil in my bottom cabinets and I left my door open a little bit. And when I went to bed, I said, when I wake up, there will be no mouse in my house. Get to work now. And I left it at that. And, and uh, luckily there's no mouse in the house anymore. Well, that's, that's a good thing. Yes. 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 So, <laughs> so um, and one of the things too, I can show you was I received a marble. Oh, the marble is so cool. Um, yeah. Now, the marble is clear and it doesn't have the eye in it. And it has like a, a rainbow kind of a sheen on it. I don't know if you can pick that up. Yes, you can a little bit. Um, but how the marble came about was, now it was probably three to four months ago now and it just appeared in the living room. And as I've explained to you before, this house was a brand new house when we moved into it. So no one has lived here previously. My children are older. We don't have marbles. We didn't bring marbles into the house. And we haven't had children here that could have possibly brought marbles. So one day when my daughter said, oh, mum, there's a marble on the floor, I was busy vacuuming or something and I said, oh, that's okay, just put it on the bench there. And, you know, I didn't think anything of it until about two days after and I thought, <laughs> hey, wait a minute, a marble in my house. And I had a good look at the marble and I thought, I've never seen one without the eye in it before. Um, and it just, it just dawned on me that this was a gift. Right. And so they're treasured gifts. That's all I can say. That's right. That's right. Well, I hope like a year from now, like they're, 
we've gotten our vibrations so good and technology can keep up with this that they'll just be my guests right here mm -hmm. yeah I mean, that would ultimately be like if i'm going to manifest i'm going to manifest big <laughs> yeah yeah well i feel they've been in the house i've had twice now the dog has been on the ground looking down the hallway wagging its tail and there's nothing there yeah um and sometimes in our bedroom something will make a big noise like a, a bang or a thump or something mm. and you sit up and you think now what was that you know <laughs> there's nothing there and you know yourself they can be little tricksters too so right um, right yeah. that was sort of how why i was giggling about that damn mouse because yeah. you know like you know, what if that mouse is really like, you know, some entity or something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Strange I, things I, was, I was speaking to Kiwoni about the, how they're tricksters. And uh, he said, oh yeah, they're tricksters. Like they like to um, play with you uh, because it gives them a laugh. They, they like to... Yeah. They never hurt you. It's always in in fun, yes. and uh, as you know, in Washington, um, my shoes on the day that I was speaking, I lined up my my clothes and my shoes. I jumped in the shower and I got out and I went to get dressed and I put all my clothes on and I said, "Oh, my shoes are gone." <laughs> and so I had everyone staying in the house search for my shoes, and they were nowhere to be seen. And I thought, "Oh, I was getting." kind of annoyed because we were searching for half an hour and time was running out we had to leave and then Nick says I'll just check the car in the boot and I said but it's impossible they can't be in the car because they were just here and he says I'll check anyway and he comes down from the car because there were stairs and he came down and he said guess what they were in the boot and I said how could that be possible I told Kiwoni, and he said, oh, yeah, it would have been them for sure. Oh, God. <laughs> it's incredible. That's great. That's great. Yeah, because, like, you know, and this is another thing that we really want people to understand is, like, the relationship is real. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not, uh, you don't have to, like, start acting different or, I mean, it's just, I mean, they, they know us better than we do, probably. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I find yeah. that they really guide you as well. Um, you know, some people um, with the mind speak, you know, that, that um, I think people overthink that too much. It's just like it, it comes within you as a knowing and sometimes you'll get the, as I said before, the little pictures in your head where you see like a little movie mm. and there'll be some words with it. It's kind of like that. Mm. And that's, that's really it in a, nut, in a nutshell. Mm. Um, so, yeah. And, you know, uh, te telepathy is, is uh, uh, really quite natural for us. Uh, once you, um, I, and I don't even know, you know, I, I think we've had telepathy since birth, but it's a matter of usage or not. And, and, uh, some people even say that, you know, it would be, you know, they would say something crazy, like it was of the devil or something. I mean, you know, people say weird things, but, um, uh, once I know from myself that, um, after being so aware of the telepathy that I use as, as on the, my other dimensional projects that, um, funny, I'm a, a show host that words are just so limited and, yeah. and we're all struggling to find, um, and I know when I had my babies, um, Somehow I was very aware of telepathy at that point, and I, um, I, I didn't use words a lot 
when I first had my babies. I, I still try to uh, maintain that for as long as I could. And of course, eventually it, get, it you know, it gets lost in the shuffle, but, um, but I am, I am happy to say that the telepathy I have with my children now is on point. And, uh, so that part, I'm, I'm really glad that I did that because, um, because, and especially, um, you know, right now when things are kind of sketchy, uh, should we lose our internet? Okay. I think for people like us who have our telepathy, we'll just, we'll just sit down and we'll get into that and we'll know. Yeah, we'll be able to connect with our families and and all. But for some people who have yet to um, become skillful in their in their telepathy, um, might um, uh, feel uh, you know cut off if if we were to all lose our internet. Yeah, um, but I do feel I do feel confident in uh, in that aspect. Yeah. I, I agree. I think we've always had it. Um, it's a part of who we are, but we either learn to switch it off or some people develop it more. Um, but it, I believe it's, we've all got it. It's, it's natural within us. Um, and some people just use it so much more than other people. Mm -hmm. Um, but when it comes to animals, like just dogs or cats, I mean, they have the psychic ability. They don't have words like we have, but they sense things and it's all a, a psychic type sense. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're using it all the time. Mm -hmm. and that's how the Sasquatch beings, um, they're using it all the time as well. Right. It's just how it works for them. Right. So, yeah. Wow. But, yeah, it's incredible. And I'm I am looking forward to uh, getting uh, getting some time with Mick because he's got some amazing stories too. He does. Yeah. And I, I I'm sure we'll we'll probably have a couple of forty minute sessions with them as well. <laughs> Well, as you know, Mick can talk, so, yeah. so um, but his stuff is very interesting, very interesting, and the combination of the two of us now is we're, we're both getting all this stuff, and uh, it, it's good. I That's mean, really cool to have a partner that you can have uh, that kind of relationship, a multidimensional relationship with a partner. That, that Yeah. Not easily. Well, as I've always said, the, the beings that are around me um, have told me, and I've always known it, that they've actually brought us together um, because there are specific tasks that we're here to do and we're doing them together. So I'm extremely lucky to have that, um, to have a, a person to that understands and we can do this together it's amazing that's beautiful yeah well lee thank you so much for sharing and and uh and i just love spending time with you and and uh and i love it because if we start talking and all I, all i ever say is oh me too me too me too <laughs> and uh it just uh it's just so good to to uh feel the openness and the freedom and, 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 you know, the kindred spirits that we are to share so many dimensions together. So thank you so much. And thank and, you uh, so much. Thank oh. you for having me on your show. And uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. We'll have, we'll, we'll have to do this again and, and uh, keep track of, uh, of the book that you're writing and, and uh, and collect some more experiences that we can share. Sure, no problem. All right. Well, peeps, I hope you've enjoyed this. From my heart to yours, namaste. Namaste.